Next data, the power to promote sustainability. Let's talk about eco-intelligence. And with this, a very warm welcome to Miraxis TV, live from the K2022. And my guests next to me are Michael Krischig. Yeah. Hello, good Thank to you. have you here. Dr. Stefan Thomas. Hi. And last but not least, Dr. Alexander Kalupka. Hi. Hi. So we need to find an answer, a proper answer about the, our main question today. So let's directly do the deep dive. What is, in your point of view, Stefan, the current status quo in the polymer industry using available data to optimize sustainability? Yeah, thanks for the question. Actually, from my point of view, um, the polymer industry isn't more ahead or behind other industries if you compare it to other industries. Basically, uh, th but the real issue is that plastics uh, is pretty much in the focus. Plastics, because of the reputation on the one hand, but also on the other hand because of the regulations that come up, for example, from the EU Green Deal and stuff like this. So the whole polymer value chain has to become more sustainable and this means reduce, reuse, recycle, measures like this. And data can be a big part to do that. But, and there's the but, if you look at the digitalization initiatives over the last years, they were pretty much use case driven. So you had like a standalone, you have, you have a lot of standalone solutions of data silos. And if you really want to have data driven optimization, you need transparency. And this is exactly what we are lacking. So what would you say? What are the main challenges? Uh, I would say it's basically we have two main challenges, I would say. The one thing is infrastructure. So we are coming from a use case driven world, but we need to invest in infrastructure. That means we have to retrofit machines. We have to build interfaces between machines, between systems. Um, we have to invest in central data storage as well. You have to really store the data, make the data available. And actually investing in infrastructure is not really sexy because it takes time, it costs money, and you don't have a fast ROI or something. So but this is the first thing. The second thing is if we look between the data or for the data exchange between companies, that's another thing. Most of the companies they don't want to exchange data. Actually because they they think you know that the data is misused somehow by the other companies so you need like rules and standards to do so so to protect your data even if you have exchanged it to protect your data that it's only used for that purpose and a very very good example i would say is the co2 footprint i mean it's on the lips of everybody right now yeah everybody's talking about co2 and if you want a proper co2 calculation you need first of all the transparency in your company but also You need also the data from the supplier, from the sub-supplier. And if they don't have the data, if they don't have the transparency, or if they don't calculate it according to the same standard, or if they don't want to exchange the data with you, you can't calculate it. You can estimate it somehow, but you can't calculate it. And if you can't calculate it, you can't optimize it. So obviously, it's a complex problem, right? So let's stay with the last example of the CO2 footprint. How important is CO2 reduction for Meraxis and what is your contribution, Michael? Yes, of course, it's very important. That's also why we have this talk today. And we've seen it the last days at the K Fair. Customers proactively came to us and asked us, okay, what do you have to offer in terms of CO2 footprint? And luckily, we already provide us first solution. Uh, directly integrated into our customer portal. So we provide a CO2 footprint uh, for the product and also for the delivery from the producer until the gate of the customer. So basically right now the first step is we are taking data from reference databases, uh, but as a second step and we are already on it to collect the data from the suppliers and their suppliers in order to to be even more precise uh, when it comes to the CO2 footprint. Mm -hmm. So you want to say that your fine answers to uh, the most challenging questions of your customers, where's my biggest and highest emission and how can I approve it, or better saying how c this affects the way that I'm, uh, yes, working with, re with recycled material, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. So 
the CO2 footprint is only the start, of course. So it enables customers in order to, yeah, in, in order to improve their footprint, in order pe to become more sustainable. Uh, but we, what we also need is, besides the CO2 footprint, is material data. And with material data, I mean, uh, we need batch-based technical properties, impurities, and this is especially uh, important for recycling materials, mm -hmm. because within recycling, the qualities vary from batch to batch, and this is a big challenge for producers. Yes, I think this is a really a valuable contribution because, you know, um, in, on the other hand, I'm just thinking, thinking that does that mean you create a CO2 transparency that is very well needed to make proper estimations on achieved reductions? But what about the enabling? Uh, what about enabling the optimization itself? Customers can already use the CO2 footprint data in order to make a better purchasing decision. That's why we also include it in, the, in our material recommendation system, which recommends the best suitable recycling material, but also prime material for the customer's application and its requirements. And so the customer has all the information he needs to have to buy or to test the right material in the first place. And this will reduce the effort uh, for testing. And data can really support there. Yes. And the second, the second point of uh, optimization in our point of view is the mixtures or the recipes. So there's a huge potential if we collect all the data from the material and the batches, we are pretty sure we can improve also the mixtures mm -hmm. before it runs, uh, before the material comes into the machine. Mm -hmm. And when I'm already at the machine, the third part uh, in our point of view is the machine optimization in terms of smart production. Imagine the machine already has all the data from the material that comes into the machine before it starts running so it can adapt to the certain uh, circumstances the material brings with. As we are talking about machine data, then of course we have to introduce our next guest here on stage, Alexander. Can you give us some insights on how it is possible that your company, Sense Experts, promises to optimize a production processes using available data, knowing, on the other hand, that sufficient data usage is the biggest challenge? Yeah, so I can totally agree with uh, what Michael has said. So if we would have the data, in front of the manufacturing process itself. This would help a lot to define the process windows. And we have a massive data amount already existing in the manufacturing environment, but the problem is these data are not centralized. Therefore, we have no canalization to create immediate benefit out of the data that are existing. And that is where Sense Expert comes into the game. We have identified this issue. We have isolated solutions around. And what we do is we have a hardware equipment that connects to the machine, that connects to the peripheral systems, that connects to all the sensors that are already implemented there. And what we do is, based on the knowledge we have, 50 plus years of experience in material characterization and sensor technology, we have put all this knowledge together. And what we do is we bridge the gap in between material behavior and process parameters. And that brings us into the position that based on what is happening inside the mold, we can really adapt the process parameters and are therefore on the route for a more sustainable manufacturing. That means keeping it short, we therefore enable our end customers to produce more sustainable in a way that they can reduce the scrap, cycle times, reduce the energy consumption, and even if we think about the installation of a machine that usually takes at least two weeks today, mm -hmm. we can reduce this time and also the downtimes. Sounds quite overpromising, but I can tell you it's the truth. And uh, I would love to dive deeper, but I think we don't have enough time to really discuss specific use cases here. I would say it sounds quite promising. So uh, the future looks definitely bright as a partner of yours. Thanks, Alex. And uh, one last question uh, to close uh, this uh, loop regarding our main question, how data has the power to promote sustainability. So, Alexander, how will the future look like from your point of view? 
one very easy sentence. Get rid of data silos, foster collaboration, and think in ecosystems, collaborative ecosystems between the industry partners, because just the collaborative work of different stakeholders focusing on our end customer demands can really enable a sustainable production. So in my opinion, since Expert is just the beginning of using material data and machine data to bring that together and with the AI models to enable a more sustainable production. And here we really welcome all industry partners in an ecosystem. So I'm talking about material suppliers, machine manufacturers, mold makers, and many others to be part of this ecosystem because just then, when we foster these collaborations, we can bring added value to our end customers. And then we are on the way that in this collaborative ecosystem, we are on the way for a more sustainable production, taking into account all the influences we have to reduce the CO2 footprint, to reduce the waste of material and to reduce the energy costs. Climate change, one of the major tasks of our generation. And I learned so far from you that future topic, this is something that we can only tackle together. Thank you very much. And thanks so much for tuning into this session. Do you have questions left? Let us know in the comments below. And don't forget to like us on LinkedIn.